So here's the situation. We're on Bessemer Road. We're heading towards the Bessemer Mine. That way is an old railway line, which obviously heads towards the mine. That's the road route. Keep to the right. Remember what I said? Stay right. Foster Lake Road. So this is the actual open pit area. Uh, from here, the black water is indeed very deep. It drops down uh, well over 100 feet. Not sure how well you can see it, but this is an old mill of some kind. Um, just kind of coming apart now. More or less buried underneath the scrub and the cedar. That's the old foundation. No doubt you had literally up to a hundred plus thirsty iron miners bunked here in the late 1800s drinking, partying and preparing to move on to another location when once this place went bust. Stuff. Yeah. There's a little, is that for a fireplace? That could be for apple. I don't know, probably a fireplace, yeah. And a window? Wow, So along this way, we're looking at the um, abandoned Barry's Bay and Bessemer Mine, laid along the wagon route from Le Mab. Uh There seemed to be only a single engine to run along here. Um, they called her Bessie, and uh, they bought her second hand from somewhere in Chicago. And she was a much loved fixture in, in, the, in the local mining community. And um, uh, they actually used Bessie to uh, ferry miners and their families to church on Sundays on a flat, flat, uh, flatbed rail car. But it seems that uh, she was a constant problem uh, because uh, wherever she went there were sparks from her smokestack and it caused fires all over the place including on, on the bridge over, over the, the nearby river. Here we are, top of the dumps, Little Mullet Lake. The deposit itself, it dips 400 feet beneath that lake, heading out in that direction. So what I'm really looking for are magnetite octahedrons. Hoping to find them in a, a granular calcite. Uh, basically we had 90,350 tons of this material, or at least of the ore. Um, this is just the waste rock from the actual mine itself, the big open pit. So that's one heck of a lot. So this is what they call a scarn deposit, which is um, basically where the rock, where a granite uh, intrusive has basically contributed um, various types of metals and so forth uh, to an area that borders along a carbonate of some type, like a dollar stone. And basically it's altered the dollar stone and uh, done a lot of uh, hydrothermal uh, action and in so depositing the metal. So carbonates now exist here within a quartzite amphibole or an amphibole quartzite and uh, that's where you're going to find the, uh, the, the magnetite. I'm getting rained on. Um, I'm only finding really small octahedrons right now. Uh, so I'm going to have to probably dig a little deeper into the, into the actual rubble heap. So that's just mass magnetite, uh, which is basically Fe2 positive, Fe3 positive, O4, and that of course differs from hematite, which is Fe2, O3. So Bessemer finally closed with the uh, death of a young worker who had fallen from the, uh, the cage, or at least the elevating system that they had in the main pit. He'd fallen to his death and that was the final straw there that, that closed the, the, um, the mine. In fact, uh, accidents were a constant problem at the mine. Uh, and most commonly they were blamed on inadequate lighting. So there was an example of, um, of this, of one worker who was badly burned when he'd used uh, an empty carbide container, and that is for the carbide lamps, to bale water. So the residual material in the canister, that is the carbide, had reacted with the water and caused an explosive gas. So here's an example, you can see right along the rim there, uh, the beginnings of the magnetite octahedrons. They're not very well formed, I'm afraid, in this case. I'm going to just keep looking to see if I can see something better. Oh, 
just found another nice piece. Um, you can see it close up there with a, with a still that I'm taking. The video doesn't focus too well on it, but nice. Again, at the edge of the calcite, um, obviously in a pocket of some type, and it's just, it was just lying there. Um, I'm pretty well finding that this side of the hill, in other words, uh, down the front of the hill, not so good, but down the sides here, it's a lot more stuff. I guess it hasn't been searched quite as diligently. Yeah, there's no shortage of the pyrite. Look, you get some pyrite up against the magnetite. Um, it's everywhere. Tons of pyrite. I mean, just the weight of some of this stuff tips you off as to its metallic content. Uh, I believe the, the, the yield here was 49 to 61 percent. I've seen a lot of garnet in this rock as well. You know, in both cases um, of these two nice little specimens that I found, what really caught my eye was again, just like the zircon at the Sarnog zircon mine, it was just the glint off the surface, the high luster that caught my eye as I was kind of combing over the stones on the side of this hill and it may have helped that it's just rained um, because again stuff is a lot more shinier than usual so um, maybe focus your looking like that looking for the bigger pieces uh, that have the calcite and then just catch that glimpse just flashes out at you